Listen, something extraordinary is happening right above your head, and most people have no idea. A comet just exploded in brightness overnight. The sun fired its most powerful blast in months, aimed directly at this same comet, and in just weeks you'll have a front row seat to what could be the most dramatic sky show of the year. But here's the thing, you need to know exactly when to look up, because this window won't last. Let me show you what's really going on. The outburst that changed everything September 12, 2025. Comet C, C2025, now called SWAN, swings around the sun at half the distance Mars ever gets to Earth. At first, nothing special. Just another faint dot hovering around magnitude 7.4 comma with a modest 2 degree tail. The kind of thing only hardcore astronomers care about. But then September 26 hits. Observers in Japan and Australia are the first to catch it. A sudden massive jump in brightness. Nearly a full magnitude leap in a single night. Forums explode with activity. Fresh data confirms it. Swan just surged to magnitude 5.7 comma, then held steady at 5.8. This isn't some data error. This is the comet's frozen core, battered for centuries in deep space, finally cracking under the sun's relentless heat. Volatile pockets buried beneath the surface hit their breaking point. Gases erupt violently, dragging dust and ice with them, feeding the tail and swelling the coma. And here's what matters to you. Light curves are deviating from every prediction. Observers are spotting jet-like features near the nucleus. Evidence of crustal fractures, new vents tearing open. The comet's inner engine is exposed, and what happens next? Nobody knows for certain. The question isn't just how bright Swan will get. It's what this unleashed energy will do to the comet itself, and to the massive tail now unfurling behind it. A tail you can actually see picture this. A tail stretching 2.5 degrees across your sky. That's five full moons laid end to end. This isn't some fuzzy speck you need a telescope to barely glimpse. This is a structure you can trace with basic binoculars. A streak that demands your attention even from suburban backyards. And that scale, it reveals everything. Knots of dust, shifting rays. The electric blue glow of the ion tail, sculpted in real time by solar wind. The tail's architecture tells you a live story, one that changes every single night. The dust, heavy and slow, lingers close to the comet's path, forming a broad sunlit fan. But the ion tail, lighter, more volatile, more dramatic. Under the right conditions it can snap, ripple, even break away completely. With Swan's tail covering more sky than any city skyline, even small telescopes pick out the details. Streamers, kinks, sudden bends, track it night after night, and you'll see it yourself. New twists appearing, plumes fading, sudden brightenings as fresh material streams from the nucleus. Right now, amateurs across continents are stacking exposures, comparing notes, sharing time lapses that capture tail motion hour by hour. They're documenting subtle color shifts, icy blue for ions, golden for dust revealing complex chemistry unfolding in real time, your location matters. Swan rides low in the southern sky through September and October, favoring observers in Australia, South Africa, Argentina. But even northern latitudes get their chance as Swan climbs higher, and the moon fades. If you've got even modest binoculars, the next few weeks offer you a front row seat to live solar system physics. But here's where it gets wild. The tail's reach means more than spectacle. It sets the stage for what happens when the sun sends its own shock wave into the same slice of space. The question becomes how will that tail react when the solar storm arrives? When the sun strikes September 28, 8.43 a.m. Coordinated Universal Time, the sun erupts, an M6.4 dash class flare, the strongest in months. For most of September, solar activity had been dead quiet. X-ray readings trending flat, then without warning, the monitors spike. Energy output in the millions of kilowatts lights up real-time charts. Solar physicists at NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center scramble to assess the event, cross-checking with Solar Dynamics Observatory imagery and coronagraph data. This isn't just another solar hiccup. M-class flares are mid-tier, but M6-4 is enough to make satellite operators nervous. The flare's origin, active region 4232, a complex sunspot group with twisted magnetic fields, positioned in the same quadrant Swan is approaching. Within 30 minutes, coronagraphs confirm a coronal mass ejection launched. Initial speed, 800 to 1000 km per second, one of the fastest eruptions this year. Inside operations rooms alerts ripple out. 
satellite teams double-check radiation protocols. But here's the critical detail, this CME isn't Earth-directed, instead it's racing toward the exact spot where Swan's expanding ion tail is spreading across space. The timing, just two days after Swan's outburst, catches everyone's attention. Duty officers flag the event for comet scientists, who immediately begin modeling the possible intersection. For you watching at home, the numbers tell everything. Mem 6, 4 flare at 8.43 UTC, a CME blasting outward, a comet with a two-degree wide tail directly in its path. The sun, quiet for weeks, just sent a powerful pulse into the same sector where Swan is already putting on its show. This intersection is rare, and every instrument from GOES X-ray detectors to ground-based telescopes now has a reason to watch closely. The race to track the blast inside NOAA's prediction center, analysts pull up real-time feeds from SOHO's coronagraph and Stereo-A's heliospheric images, hunting through frames for the expanding arc of plasma. The CME launched just after 8.45 UTC, fanning outward at 900 km less, fast enough to cross the Earth-Sun distance in under two days. Its angular width measures approximately 90 degrees, placing it among the year's broader ejections. But the crucial detail, its aim, this blast misses Earth by a wide margin. Instead, model overlays show the main lobe sweeping into the sector, now occupied by Comet Swan. The challenge is geometry. Solar ejections don't travel in straight lines. They expand, twist, sometimes fragment as they plow through solar wind. To chart the CME's path, scientists stitch together coronagraph images, plotting the leading edge against known positions of planets, spacecraft and for the first time in years, a comet with a tail longer than two degrees. Swan's coordinates, just inside Earth's orbit, and slightly south of the ecliptic, put it near the predicted corridor, but three-dimensional uncertainty remains. Without a direct Earth hit, in-situ plasma data is limited, leaving ground-based and orbital imaging as the best tracking tools. Every major forecast center flags the event for comet researchers. The question will the CME's broad front actually intersect Swan's tail, or sweep harmlessly past? Best estimates place the CME's arrival in the comet's vicinity between 48 and 72 hours after launch, depending on true trajectory and speed. Density projections suggest a moderate event, enough to disturb the ion tail, but unlikely to trigger terrestrial effects. For Earth, minimal risk. For Swan, the incoming solar plasma sets the stage for a possible display of tail kinks, disconnections, rapid changes, phenomena that could unfold in hours, visible to anyone watching the right patch of sky. The tools are ready. Data streams open. Now all eyes shift to the comet corridor. The invisible battle in space magnetic fields shape the fate of every comet tail caught in solar wind. When a coronal mass ejection like the September 28th blast sweeps across space, it drags a tangled web of magnetic field lines, each carrying its own orientation. Swan's ion tail is built from charged particles stripped from the nucleus and pushed away by constant solar outflow. These ions don't just drift. They cling to magnetic field lines, forming an invisible tether stretching millions of kilometers behind the comet. But the real drama begins when those lines meet the boundary between the comet's tail and incoming solar wind. If the magnetic field embedded in the CME points southward, opposite the typical direction near the comet, conditions are perfect for what physicists call magnetic reconnection. This is the cosmic equivalent of a circuit breaker snapping open. Field lines from solar wind and the comet's tail collide snap, and rapidly rejoin in new patterns, releasing energy and cutting loose whole sections of plasma. In practical terms, the comet's tail can break away in minutes, sending a glowing fragment drifting into space while a new tail begins forming almost immediately. The orientation of the CME's magnetic field, especially the biz component, determines the strength of this effect. Southward biz is, is the trigger most likely to sever the tail. Northward fields slip by with little more than a ripple. The process is fast, sometimes visible within hours, leaving behind dramatic kinks, sudden brightness drops, or even a detached cloud of ions moving independently. For theorists and modelers, this is a rare chance to see magnetic reconnection play out on a scale no laboratory can match, with every twist and break written across the sky in real time, every hour counts now, the window for dramatic change is open, the rules are simple, watch the tail, trust what you see, keep your expectations nimble. What you might witness Swan's ion tail, more than 2.5 degrees long, is exposed to the full force of solar wind. 
If the CME's magnetic field lines intersect the comet's path, the ion tail could kink or snap away in as little as 90 minutes, a process that usually unfolds quietly in deep space, but now plays out on a stage visible to backyard telescopes. Spectral signatures may shift abruptly, with hydrogen and oxygen lines drifting by up to 50 km per cess as plasma reacts to the shock. Morphology can change on timescales shorter than a movie, a bright filament breaking free, a new tail forming in the wake of a disconnection event. This is science at real speed, and the best data may come from you, anyone with a camera and clear sky. But here's the reality check. Not every ripple or sudden dimming proves a solar storm hit. The geometry of the CME's path remains an open question. Predictions about direct encounters remain hypotheses, not established facts. Experts urge vigilance, not certainty. The correct response? Document, compare, report, build a global record as the comet's story unfolds. For now, the only guarantee is change. The next anomaly could appear in a single frame, and the world is watching together. Your best chance, October 21st. The numbers tell your story. Swan will pass just 0.25 astronomical units from Earth, about 39 million kilometers, roughly 100 times the Moon's distance. For a comet, that's the planetary equivalent of a close flyby. This isn't random. The geometry lines up almost perfectly. Swan's orbit crosses the ecliptic at a shallow angle, riding the same invisible plane defining the solar system's main traffic lane. The comet's position just south of the ecliptic places it squarely where solar wind and the heliospheric current sheet are most active. On the same date, interstellar visitor 3 Italis reaches superior conjunction directly opposite the Sun from Earth's perspective, while Swan sweeps through its closest point. Both objects, separated by millions of kilometers but sharing the same broad corridor, offer a rare chance to compare native and interstellar dynamics side by side. For orbit analysts, this alignment is a statistical outlier. The odds of two such bodies, one from deep solar orbit, one from interstellar space, converging near the ecliptic within days, vanishingly small. The timing is equally striking. October 21st brings a new moon, erasing lunar glare and creating the darkest skies of the month. With Swan at its nearest, the parallax effect, tiny shifts in apparent position seen from different points on Earth, becomes measurable to even modest backyard telescopes. Sky position plotting shows Swan climbing higher each night, its tail tracing a path across southern constellations. The gap between Earth and Comet, mapped in real time, shrinks to a mere quarter of the Sun-Earth distance, offering your best possible window for observation before Swan recedes into deep space once more. How to see it yourself? For anyone hoping to catch Swan in the coming nights, timing and preparation are everything. October 21st is your headline date, closest approach, new moon, darkest skies of the month, but the window stretches wider. Swan's path runs just south of the ecliptic, climbing higher each night, through southern constellations, from Buenos Aires to Perth. The comet rises early and lingers well into pre-dawn hours, its tail sweeping west across the horizon. In northern latitudes, the view improves as October unfolds, swan peaking above the tree line after midnight, gaining altitude each night. Star charts put swan near the border of Grus and Pisces Austrinus. Easy to find if you trace a line from Fomalhaut, the brightest star in the region. The tail's orientation favors side-by-side -side comparison with field stars. 2.5 degrees long means the comet's trail can be measured against the gap between Fomalhaut and its nearest neighbors. For binocular users, a standard 7 Cauti 50 field of view covers the entire tail in one sweep. Small telescopes reveal more detail, but even a camera on a tripod captures the streak with exposures of just a few seconds. The parallax trick comes into play as Swan closes in, with the comet just 0.25 AU away. Its apparent position shifts ever so slightly, depending on where you stand, an effect measurable with a few hours' patience and a careful eye. Amateur imaging crews are coordinating across continents, logging rise and set times, sharing overlays to track nightly tail changes. Your checklist is simple, note the comet's position, sketch or photograph the tail, watch for kinks, sudden brightenings or fading. Every observer, whether in city glow or rural dark, adds a pixel to the global picture. This is your moment to join the watch. The unfolding story. This rare timing sets up a documented encounter. 
as Swan nears its closest approach to Earth on October 21st at approximately 0.25 astronomical units. Scientists are watching for direct effects between the CME and the comet's ion tail, a phenomenon known to cause rapid visible changes. However, the exact outcome of this solar-comet interaction remains unproven. No direct link has been established between the recent solar flare and Swan's earlier outburst. What is verified this October? Both amateur and professional observers have a unique window to witness cometary and solar dynamics in real time. As documented in the Global Observation Campaign, Swan's journey is a rare opportunity to track cosmic forces at work, with key results still unfolding. And you, you're part of this story now. Whether you're watching from your backyard, your balcony, or a dark sky site, every observation you make adds to humanity's understanding of this cosmic event. So mark your calendar, grab your binoculars. October 21st is coming fast, and Comet Swan is waiting for you to look up. The universe is putting on a show. Don't miss your seat.